haven't done a true nas video in a while which is strange because i love true nas it's what i use for my main storage server but i really only use it for that so it's not really too exciting however ix systems has made some pretty awesome updates in the meantime that are captured in the latest release of true nas scale named electric eel this includes things like a switch from kubernetes to docker thank you extendable vdevs true cloud backups and an updated dashboard so how about we just take a look at all these things and see if it's worth the hype. All right, so the first thing we're doing is we're actually gonna take a look at the release notes, like a bunch of nerds, but there's some good stuff in here. So the first thing you'll see here is TrueNAS Apps has moved from Kubernetes to Docker. This is huge. Now they initially released scale with Kubernetes, which made sense for the scale name to be able to scale out. But uh, Kubernetes, if you've ever used it, is very finicky and difficult to support. So switching to Docker, making it easy for the end user and for people to develop and support on is gonna make things so much better. Extend a RAID Z VDEV, fantastic stuff here. So TrueNAS is great, ZFS is great, but one of the big drawbacks of ZFS is that it's not super easy to expand already existing storage pools. What with this, this is going to be massive. So what this allows you to do is take an existing VDEV in a pool and basically expand it out with individual disks without having to create a whole another VDEV. You'll see in a bit, it's great. New TrueCloud backup tasks. So this is just another way to back up to a cloud provider. What they're doing here is a collaboration with StoreJ which I don't know if it's a collaboration or if IX Systems is an owner of this. There's a mutual uh, benefit here, a mutual partnership, but just another option to back up your stuff to the cloud. New global search for finding pages and settings, very cool. Dashboard reworked, you'll see that in a bit. Definitely an improvement and going deeper into that, we'll see with net data, it's actually pretty sweet. UI support for NVMe smart tasks, align and closure management code with 13.3, okay. Preserve SMB alternate data streams, uh, rewrite TrueNAS installer for better support, polish UI tables, uh, replace NSLCD with SSSD, uh, generate unique system ID for each install, and ZFS fast deduplication. Uh, cool, I like deduplication and I like fast, so. Great. But yeah, a lot of stuff here, but we are going to focus on the big ones, which is the switch to Docker, uh, extending a VDEV, uh, the dashboard, and uh, TrueCloud backup tasks. So yeah, let's just dive into it. Okay, here we are in the new dashboard, which honestly looks pretty similar to the old dashboard, but one of the big things here is that you can now configure it and use these widgets. Okay, so if we go in here, you'll see we're now able to edit these sections. We can kind of move them around. Uh, we can add ones. So if we go into here, we can select a layout, you know, whatever you want. And then there's different widget categories. So if you want some CPU information, select that. And maybe temperature per core or usage per core. Uh, down here, maybe we want memory information. And then maybe over here we want storage info sure then you can click save and it is then placed on your dashboard and yeah i mean it's cool it's useful it's definitely better than the previous dashboard um is it groundbreaking uh no but it's cool i like it it's an improvement so i can't complain but another cool thing that's built into true nas scale that's not really dependent on 24.10 pretty sure it already actually exists, is its integration with net data. So if you go down here into reporting, you'll see this net data button, click that, and it's gonna open the self-hosted net data instance, which has a crap ton of information. So immediately just a bunch of useful stuff, disk information, CPU usage, uh, network information, RAM usage down here, they give you some information on the IO weight, uh, what else? We got some uh, soft IRQ information and some information about it and how to monitor it and what to do. Scrolling down, just a whole bunch of stuff uh, broken down into different charts. Over here on the side, you can see the categories that's broken out into as well. 
We can go down into ZFS cache and some information on that, super useful. And then if you want, you can customize this and add more charts and alarms. Now I recently did a video on net data, which is kind of basic on how to do some of this stuff. So yeah, go watch that if you want to add more, but this is great, especially for you data nerds. Man, net data is crazy useful. Honestly, I wish we could just take this and throw it on the main dashboard. Okay, so the big thing though, uh, switching from Kubernetes to Docker, and what this has done is it's honestly changed how apps work on here because no longer are you required to rely on like Helm or you know all the things that come with Kubernetes. It's basic standard Docker. So going into apps, you can go into discover apps, and here is kind of TrueNAS's app store, and you can see different kinds of apps, uh, some marked as community, some as stable. So you have Plex here, stable, MinIO, stable, uh, PhotoPrism, stable, uh, Home Assistant. A lot of useful ones. I, I assume moving forward, we're gonna see more move from community to stable as they're more officially supported. Yeah, I mean, the install experience is pretty straightforward. I will say I think it's gonna get better for example, if we go to something like File Browser, so if we click on File Browser and go to Install, you know, it's got our default information here. And from my perspective, if you're offering an app store, it needs to be as easy as possible with minimal user intervention. Some default stuff is here. Great. No environment variables needed, apparently. Uh, default user group. Uh, web UI port, sure. Uh, storage type IX volume, so it's gonna create it automatically, perfect. Two CPU cores, four gigs of RAM. Okay, yeah, that all sounds good to me. Install. Failed to render composed template, uh, expected at least one additional storage to be set. So basically it's saying for a file browser to run, we need to set some additional storage here. So that should be honestly built into the template, especially if you have an app store, which makes things like this, or they're supposed to be easy, this needs to be improved moving forward, but in general, it's vanilla Docker. If you want to just run it as normal Docker, you can do that. Meaning that if you want to install your own orchestrator, you can do that. So I'm running Portainer. That's what I use in pretty much all of my Docker deployments. They actually have it in the app store. If you scroll down somewhere, there it is, Portainer. You can install it directly through the app store. And then if we go to our apps, click on the web UI, and here we are in Portainer. I'm not gonna cover Portainer, that's outside the scope of this video, but from here, if you wanna use just Portainer and skip the TrueNAS App Store altogether, you can do that, and that's not something you could do before, so with the movement to Docker, you have the ability to do something like this. Fantastic. On that same kind of note, if you're using this for containerization, great. Uh, they also have the ability to do virtualization. So if you want to spin up some VMs, but honestly, I have not had the best experience with this. I've tried to install Ubuntu two separate times. It hasn't worked. I tried uh, Linux Mint and going into the display here, you'll see that I'm gonna go ahead and try to install it. Um, you need to load the kernel first. I, it shouldn't be this difficult. I don't, it could be user error. I'm I'm kind of slow. So, you know, maybe that's on me, but honestly with like Proxmox, my main hypervisor OS of choice, uh, the virtualization over there is honestly a lot better. Maybe this will get there one day, but for something that's a NAS OS first, the fact that the containerization part of that is gonna be so much better now, I'm not super worried about the virtualization, but there's definitely room for improvement. Uh, for example, one thing that I noticed, if you go to add a new VM, you can't move forward into different sections just to confirm that the options you expect to see there are actually there. You have to fill out this entire uh, required fields just to move on. So if I wanted to make sure that the GPU I expect to be there is there, I have to fill out everything just to just to get there. And if it's not, you can't like click out. If you click out, it's gone and you have to start over. Not super uh, user friendly, but again, maybe this is something they'll work on moving forward. All right, the big thing, TrueNAS, ZFS, that's what you come here for. That's the bread and butter. 
And one of the big changes is that you can now extend a VDEV. So going into storage, you'll see that I have a pool already called HDD. Guess what kind of drives are in there? Wow, you're so smart. If we go to manage devices, I guess another cool thing that I really like with scale is how this is broken out to show you kind of the hierarchy of your pool. You can see your different VDEV. So here I have a RAID Z1 VDEV, five drives wide uh, with a cache drive and two log drives in a mirror. So very cool how this is laid out. But for example, if I wanted to expand this, so right now I have about 20 terabytes of storage uh, with one parity. If I wanted to expand this, I'd have to create a whole nother VDEV, but not anymore. We can simply add another drive to this VDEV. So I've already done this before. It worked great. It's super easy. Click on it, go to extend, select the disc you want. I have one left, click extend. It's gonna take a little bit. I think last time it took like a minute maybe two. Okay, here we are about a minute into the future and success. You can see our RAID Z1 VDEV has now been expanded to six drives, which going back into storage gives us 23.66 terabytes of usable space with one drive of parity. This is huge for ZFS. This is amazing. Everybody is going to be happy to see this implemented moving forward. So Awesome stuff. Okay, the next thing, true cloud backup. So if we go into data protection, you'll see you have the basic ones that you expect, uh, cloud sync, periodic snapshots, rsync and replication. Then you have this true cloud backup task. So the difference between true cloud backups and cloud sync is essentially that the true cloud one is specifically for store J where in cloud sync, you can go in here, uh, add new credentials, and that's gonna give you different provider types, uh, Google Drive, regular HTTP, uh, Azure, SFTP, whatever, or you can still do StoreJ here. But in True Cloud Backup Tasks, it's essentially just for StoreJ. So if you go here to add new, see, that's the only option. So I went ahead and I've already created one of these. And if we take a look at it, we are using the source path down in my HTTP pool where you're, you know, essentially uh, backing up the shared directory. I've created storej credentials. I've created a bucket. Uh, I've used the root folder there and I've set it to keep the last three uh, snapshots to run daily at midnight. And I've given it a name, storej backup. And the password here, I. I don't know what password it's asking for. If I even click on this, it just says enter password. I don't know if that's creating a password specifically for the job or if it needs my password for the, the admin account. I, I need some information here. But anyway, save that and it'll send all of your snapshots to uh, the StoreJ cloud so we can actually go take a look at it. And here's the dashboard. So I'm on the free tier. Uh, they're offering limited time deals if you want to sign up for five terabytes or more worth of storage. The pricing is honestly pretty on par with other cloud storage options. It's 0 0.004 cents per gigabyte and then 0 0.007 cents per downloaded gigabyte, which comes out to about $20 per five terabytes uh, per month. But yeah, this is object storage. If we go down here, you can see we've used nine gigabytes worth of storage. Fantastic. And if we go into our buckets, you'll see there's our bucket EE demo. And you can see we are using nine gigabytes there. And that is essentially where this sync job is sending my backups to. And basically, if we click on that job and view details, it'll show a list of snapshots here. So if we wanna roll back from the cloud based on the snapshots we've sent there, you can just click on it and restore that easy. So yeah, will I use this personally? Probably not, but a lot of people out there really like sending their backups to the cloud just to give themselves another option. And I'm not gonna complain about yet another option because competition uh, makes things better for the end user. So great, use StoreJ if you want to. So that basically covers the big changes to TrueNAS scale, but some other things in the release note were like fast deduplication. So if we go into our storage, I lied, go into the data sets, data set details, advanced options, scrolling down here to ZFS deduplication off, 
If you turn that on, it's gonna give you a message about how it's not fully supported, but I'm assuming when this goes to fully stable release, this will be implemented. And I have no way of knowing if ZFS fast is better than, Z or deduplication fast is better than the previous deduplication, but I'll take their word for it if it works. Great, I'll probably leave that to like someone smarter than me like Tom Lawrence to test. But he actually just did a live stream showing off the latest release of 24.10. I didn't watch it because I didn't wanna be influenced. I wanted to kind of have my own opinion on things. So go check that out, I'm sure it's great. Another thing I really like about uh, TrueNAS Scale in general is if you are in data sets and you want to create a new one, it gives you these nice little templates. So if you want a generic one, cool. Uh, one designed specifically for an SMB share, one specifically for apps, and one specifically for multi-protocol, multi which is NFS and SMB on the same data set. They have these templates and presets that make it super easy to do that. So overall thoughts on TrueNAS Electric Eel. I'm really excited about it. The two big things were moving to Docker and VDEV expansion. Both of those are things a lot of people have been asking for and I think a lot of people are gonna be excited about. Go try it if you want. I'm not gonna tell you to implement it in your production system, but if you want to, go ahead. I'm not your dad, or am I? Now it's always good as end users to get the features that we've been asking for and basically what that usually means is that the company making the software is actively listening to the community. So I have no doubts that moving forward, there will be even more changes that benefit the end users. So I'm I'm hoping that's the case. Let me know if you've already tried 24.10 or if you're interested in trying it, let me know what you're most excited about down in the comments. But that's all I have for you today. If you liked it, drop a like. If you like content like this, then go ahead and subscribe. I wanna give a huge shout out to my YouTube members and my Patreons. You guys are my high capacity ZFS pool with so many forms of caching and the ability to expand your main VDEV. You guys are the best. And if you're still watching, you're ButterFS. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>